Welcome to this short demonstration on how to deploy a site-to-site -site one acceleration using Replify. I'm using ESXi 4.1 for my cloud environment. You could quite easily use any online cloud service or Zen server or Hyper-V. Very simple to deploy Replify using VMware. Use the VMware console, go to the file menu and select deploy OVF template. Then you need to simply paste in the location, the URL from where you're going to download the appliance. You could also download the appliance to a local disk and specify a local location, which obviously will speed up the process. In this case, I'm going to download directly from Replify themselves. I can now see that the type of the appliance and also the version of Replify. So choose next to continue. Um, I can specify a name for my virtual machine. I'm just going to change the uh, version number and change it to cloud. Say I am deploying it in my cloud environment. Choose some storage and the type of storage, whether it's thin provisioned or thick. Choose a network to connect to and then hit next. Okay, VMware is going to connect to the URL we specified to download the Replify appliance. This can take quite a while, so I've accelerated it in this video. Okay, so the uh, deployment's completed successfully. I can now turn on the virtual machine, but before I do that, I'm just going to edit the configuration. Um, two gig of RAM is the default, and that's adequate in most scenarios. I'm going to specify a second virtual CPU. Replify will use the second CPU if, if uh, it is required. Um, also going to specify an additional hard disk. Now I'm only going to use a, a 20 gig hard disk for now, but if you're using Replify to improve access to file servers or SharePoint servers for a lot of a lot of users, you could deploy a, a much larger disk for caching. Um, virtual machine starting up now. The first thing I'm going to need to do is give it an IP address. So you can actually see it is trying to discover a DHCP IP address at the moment, but there is no DHCP server on the network. So it's just going to time out after a few attempts. Okay, we've now in the console, um, you can see there is no IP address assigned at the moment. So first thing is to log in. Um, the default username is root and the default password is actually default. It's obviously a good idea to change the password once you've deployed the solution. First stage is to configure network. So use the configure network command, select to switch to static enter the new static address which is 192.168.10.253 new subnet mask um, gateway and a name server and the only name server I have is actually on a separate network so I'll use that one uh, save the configuration and of course in order to use the additional disk I've provided we need to tell Replify about the disk so we use the add new disk command and that will add the disk in expand the uh, the existing disk up to 22 gig. I like to finish off with a reboot after making the changes. Okay, once the appliance is online, uh, we need to configure the appliance in more detail. Um, to do this, we use a web browser, so Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome are perfectly good for this. Um, select the uh, the IP address of the appliance that we've just deployed. Um, you can see we need to activate the license code. So we can either activate a single appliance using a dedicated license key, in which case we, could, we can paste the license key in uh, using option two. To get that license key, we need to get this dossier that's on, on display now and we email that to uh, presales at bcap.com.au or directly to Replify. In my case I already have a enterprise manager fully licensed so I'm just going to specify that license code and uh, the appliance will, will obviously be licensed with a, a temporary license key in this case.
The next thing to configure is peering between Replify accelerators on the network. Um, so I use the uh, peered accelerator appliances option from the menu and specify the IP address of another appliance I have on the network. You can now see that connection and peering has been established. I also need to specify application servers. By that, I mean servers that are located at the same subnet, on the same network of this appliance that we've deployed. So I'm going to use the 192.168.10 entire subnet, um, and I'm just going to call it the cloud. I'm going to turn transparency on specifically for double take replication. I'm also going to modify the uh, application servers on the production appliance, um, which is a different subnet. It's 10.77.1, and I'm just going to call the alias of that production. And again, turn transparency on specifically for double take uh, replication from production to the cloud. The last configuration step I tend to make, and this is again specifically for double take, replication only um, is actually to disable a feature of Replify, one of the optimizations called XDR, which is an excellent feature for accelerating access to file servers and SharePoint servers, but doesn't really assist when it comes to double take replication. Please visit us at www.bcap.com.au.